Maria, hi, great to have you with me to, on today's Spotlight. It's Maria Erzen from Solutions 2. Can you introduce us to your business, please, Maria? Hi, Andy. Yes, thank you for having me on. Um, Solutions 2, we are a design and build company. We design and build temporary environments for exhibitions and events. We do it all in-house, um, based in the West Midlands. 22 years we've been going now in September. Um, my husband and I own the business and um, we produce everything in-house at our premises there. Fantastic, thank you. So help us understand a little bit more about what would make you stand out from your competition, Maria. Um, it's quite tough competition, especially around the, the West Midlands with the NEC local to us. Um, I think part of what makes us stand out actually does come down to good old fashioned customer service. Um, we've got a great team. They treat every project um, personally. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're a huge corporate or a small one man band. We look after each project in the same way. Um, so from from that respect, I think it's customer service. Also, our in house element, um, we do design, manufacture and project manage everything in house. Um, and ESSA accredited as well. ESSA is the Event Suppliers and Services Association, of which I am chair, I'm proud to say. Um, and we have an accreditation which kind of sets you aside from your competitors. It's, it's yearly, it's independently audited, and it's um, regarding health and safety and sustainability. And we are um, ESSA accredited, so anybody coming to us knows that they can uh, rely on us to to do what we say on the tin so to speak great stuff yeah that's a good point of difference thank you now we were talking a little bit off camera about the uh the roller coaster of the last couple of years where your industry basically went into um quite an interesting position thankfully back on the up curve again it's all working really well where are you going to take this business then over the next five years maria Yes, I think that that is quite a difficult um, question to answer right now because <laughs> COVID obviously was hugely detrimental to to our industry and to our business. Two years of no income. Um, it's difficult to come back from that. Thankfully, we have done. We have a fantastic team. We're we're just at the point where we've rebuilt the team to post pre COVID levels um, and we are growing again. I think at the moment um, we need to take a breath. It's been a, a roller coaster, like you say, through COVID and since COVID, we've had false starts where we went into lockdown again. And I think we're just in a position right now where we, we want to sit back, we want to reflect on what's happened, where we're going to go, continue growing. We don't want to rule the world at the moment. Um, we want to maintain the level um, that we have at the moment, the quality that we have um, in terms of our customer service and the end product. Um, and I think just allowing ourselves a little bit of time to breathe at the moment is probably the, the best thing for us. Sounds good. So question for you then, in the 22 years you've been doing this, what would you say your biggest learning has been as a business owner? Oh, 22 years of owning a business, you have a huge amount to to learn. Sure. We started the business, um, I was 27, so quite young, um, and mainly because I, I didn't like where I was working at the time. So I went on holiday and thought, I know what I'll do, I'll set up on my own. Um, but I think the biggest learning curve or the best advice I can give to anybody is to 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 pay for good advice. If it's whether it's accountancy, financial advice or legal advice or HR advice, it's very easy in the early days to think, oh, well, I'll, I'll do it myself. I'll save on that. It's, it's quite expensive, but it will pay dividends um, in the future, making sure that you have really, really good advice and good advisors around you. Mm. Yeah, great point. Um, what's been the biggest, aside from the obvious, what's been the biggest challenge <laughs> you've had? <laughs> aside from the obvious, which was um, a huge challenge, 
I think the 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 biggest challenge is probably um, people. It's probably recruitment. It's not something that people wake up in the morning and say, "Oh, exhibitions and events. That's that's what I want to go into designing and building stands." Necessarily, people tend to to fall into it, and then you either love it or you hate it, and you know very very quickly whether you love it or hate it. And I finding people uh, finding people that love it actually isn't that that difficult. It's a great industry to be in, but finding them initially is is quite hard. There's no apprenticeships for it. Um, there's nothing to really train people for a lot of the roles that we do right now. So, yeah, talent and recruitment, I would say, especially now since COVID, when a lot of people left the industry, is probably our biggest challenge. Mm. Yeah, for you and a lot of industries, actually. So, yeah, uh, definitely. yeah. So if you were um, sitting, have a, having a conversation with your 18 year old self with the knowledge you have now. So no regrets. It's not about that. It's about with the knowledge you have now. Um, what would you tell yourself? Do it all again. Yeah. Do it all again. Brilliant. Um, I, we, we, we set up without particular business plan. We set up with, um, we didn't borrow any money. We just went for it. And we were quite fortunate in that my partner is now my husband at the time was, was still working. So I was able to take a bit of a step back and focus on the business. But yeah, sometimes if you think too hard about these things, you'll never do it. There's never a right time. So yeah, do it all again, but take good advice. Great, thank you. Um. We might be doubling up here on this question, but what's the one piece of advice that you would give to other business owners, apart from the take good advice? Because we'll take that as a, a brilliant piece of advice. What else? You've got to you've got to come up with two now, Maria. <laughs> okay, well, okay, not wasn't prepared for a, a second one. Um, I oh gosh, yeah, that 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 is quite difficult actually to come up for a second one. Give me a second. Um, I think you have to, I think it's to not put too much pressure on yourself as well. It's very easy as a business owner to take on everything, to blame yourself for everything or to try and do everything. Um, delegation, it's really, really difficult to do, but use your team, use their strengths, um, be aware of their weaknesses and your own weaknesses and enable them to be able to make decisions on your behalf as well. I think that's a brilliant piece of advice, given that it was on the spot. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so all of your contact details will be down there. Um, so everybody can get in touch and find out more about you. In terms of anything that you'd like to share with us in terms of offers or in terms of best ways to get in touch next, um, over to you now, Maria, for you to throw it out there. Well, best ways to get in touch are through the uh, the contact details, obviously down there or LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, we're on all of those. Um, we can offer an initial free design proposal to anybody that gets in touch following this, um, subject to kind of specification and, and budget. We work in UK and Europe. And um, if they sign up following that kind of eight weeks plus from the event, we can offer 10% off the overall cost of the project as well. Brilliant. Great offer. Thank you. So really good insights today, Maria. Thank you very much for investing the time to join us and uh, wish you every success going forward with the business. And um, great to hear that the up curve is on and hopefully will continue to be so. Thanks for coming along today. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me on. Thank you.